Welcome friends, in this video, let's learn about wetland ecosystem, its important characteristics and its ecological functions and why the wetlands are depleting uh, these days and what are the mitigation measures that can be employed uh, to prevent the depletion of wetlands. First, the definition. A wetland is an area that is saturated with water either permanently or seasonally such that it takes on the characteristics of a distinct ecosystem. So, wetland is a land area that is saturated with water, okay, that is saturated with water either permanently or temporarily, that is seasonally. So, this is uh, considered as a wetland if it has a characteristic distinct ecosystem. So, this wetland is uh, an intermediate stage between the deep water ecosystem that is rivers and oceans and the terrestrial habitat. So, this is a type of ecotone, okay, ecotone. And this wetland has a distinct habitat e experience of uh, periodic flooding from the adjacent deep water habitat that is rivers or oceans. So this, this periodic flooding and water logging condition uh, will provide habitat for a distinct kind of plants and animal species that are adapted to shallow flooding. Okay, This is important characteristics of wetlands and the important wetlands includes lake littorals, floodplains, marshy swamps, bogs, fens, mangroves and coral reefs are all important wetlands. Here the lake littoral is the marginal area between the highest and the lowest level of lakes. Okay, If this is the highest level of lake and this is the lowest level of lake okay, and this is the lake littoral, okay, this is the marshy land and, and the floodplain are the areas lying adjacent to the river channel uh, beyond the natural use. If, if this is the uh, if uh, if this is the river stream, the adjacent area beyond the natural leaves, natural leaves means uh, elevated portion of the river bank, and this is the area of flood, flood plains. Here, this is also con considered as wetlands. So, the definition given uh, by the Ramsar Convention is important. Okay, if you memorize this whole definition, that would be very beneficial while writing the answers uh, in the examination. So, the definition of a wetland given by the Ramsar Convention is that wetlands are, it is a broad, very broad definition. It, it includes a very broad range of uh, ecosystems, aquatic ecosystem into wetlands. Okay, let's look at it. Wetlands are the areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water, uh, whether natural or artificial. Okay, it may be natural or artificial, permanent or temporary with water that is static or flowing. Okay, static or flowing fresh brackish or salt okay it may be fresh water brackish water or salty water including areas of marine water okay in areas of marine water the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meter so if the marine water the depth uh, if it exceeds more than 6 meter that is not considered as uh, wetland okay and here this is a broad broadest definition for for the wetlands because it includes both natural as well as artificial ecosystem it includes both permanent or temporary source of water and static or flowing water fresh water or brackish or salt water okay this is very broadest definition please uh, remember this one and the characteristic important characteristics of wetland include these are covered by water and has waterlogged soil uh, for at least seven days during the growing season. Okay, waterlogged soil should be there for at least seven days during the present uh, during any growing season. So it has a distinct adapted plant life that is flora. These are called hydrophytes. These are adapted to the waterlogged conditions uh, of the uh, wetlands. Okay, and the so soils are hydric soils. And these soils do not have enough oxygen for su supporting certain uh, kinds of plants. Very distinct kind of plants are, are living in these uh, wetlands. These are called hydrophytes. The soil is called hydric soil. So this is the char characteristics of wetlands. And we can classify the wetlands in, in its broadest terms into inland wetlands, that is the freshwater wetlands, wetlands and coastal wetlands. In the inland, we have lakes, ponds, Oxbow lakes, waterlogging, waterlogged so uh, soils, and seasonal wetlands and swamp and marshes. So, under this inland itself, we can classify into uh, man made wetlands. Man made wetlands include reservoirs, tanks, waterlogged 
soils like paddy fields, ash pond, and these are all the man-made sources. This is the natural source. Under the coastal wetlands, we have estuaries, okay, lagoon, creek, backwater, bay, coral reef, tidal flat, mangrove, and salt marshes. Here, the important uh, wetlands include the mangroves and the coral reefs. This has a very significant, uh, these have a very significant ecological functions. Under coastland wetland itself, we can classify another, another classification based on the man-made wetlands here also. So here, the salt pans, okay, for, for the production of salt in the oceanic areas and aquaculture are also considered as wetlands, which are man-made. So this is the broadest definition of wetlands and classification. And wetland is very important from the ecological point of view because they have various diverse ecological functions. If we lose wetland, it, it is creating un instability and uh, volatility in the ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so certain important functions of wetlands include it acts as a habitat for various aquatic flora and fauna. So it supports various aquatic flora, fauna and birds. Here most migrating birds uh, come to India, Indian wetlands uh, for the distinct habitat. Okay, And this is important. And the second uh, function is that it access, it filters the sediments and nutrients from the surface water. Okay, It filters the sediments and nutrients. Uh, for example, here if you consider this as a wetland, and this is the uh, water body or river or ocean. Okay, if the if, if the surface water runoff, that is soil erosion, carries uh, various nutrients and other sediments uh, into the water body, so it filters this wetland filters the nutrients and other sediments and gives away only the pure water, mostly pure water into the water bodies. So thereby it acts as a natural filtering agent uh, for the water body. So it also in another way prevents eutrophication of the water bodies because all the nutrients are filter, filtered here itself thereby providing uh, clean water to the water body. And it acts as a nutrient cycling body okay and it also aids in water purification. So this similar uh, philosophy here and it prevents a flood mitigation. Uh, we have uh, wetlands called mangroves also in the oceanic areas, okay, uh, ocean and river basins, and this prevents flood it, it, it aids in flood mitigation. If there is a flood, excessive flood, it acts as a barrier uh, for water and it, it protects the area behind this wetland, okay. Uh, so uh, destruction of uh, mangroves, uh, mangroves in the India is causing severe flood because it it previously it, it is acting as a barrier, but it has been destroyed in most of the places. So serious flood situation is happening in India. So it maintain it, it helps in maintenance of stream flow. So it acts as a buffer, and it also helping in groundwater recharge because uh, most of the time water is uh, stagnant in the in the wetlands. So it helps in percolation of the water into the groundwater and it helps in the groundwater recharge and it provides drinking water fish fodder and fuel uh, to the adjacent community uh, okay and it also helps in control the rate of runoff in the urban areas and it acts as a buffer shoreline against the erosion it acts as a buffer against the erosion in the shoreline okay and it has important uh, uh, function including it, it helps in tourism development recreation and it acts as a cultural heritage. For example, Chilika Lake, Koleru Lake, Ular Lake, these are all important tourist att attractions. Uh, so this, this is also important function of the wetland. And it also stabilizes the local climate because uh, the large water body uh, can stabilize the uh, environment fluctuations. Okay, And it provides stable uh, uh, stable climate to the what uh, to, to the to the area that is adjacent to the wetland so these are all the important functions of the wetlands so these are very significant uh, so we have to protect the wetlands uh, which are present in our areas so this diagrammatical rep representation will will tell you the benefits of wetland here it acts as a uh, filter filtering agent for uh, sediments pollutants and nutrients this is the wetland and it filters the water and gives the clean water to the water bodies. So thereby the drinking water quality will be will be good in these water bodies. Okay, and 
and all other functions are done by uh, these wetlands so there are various reason for various reason these wetlands are being depleted okay uh, there are various reasons. This include the conversion of land that is wetland for agricultural purposes. Okay, uh, because of the encroachment of the wetland for agricultural purposes, these these are being depleted. So we should prevent this exercise and overgrazing of the cattle, and this 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 is also causing for the depletion of the wetlands and removal of sand from the beds. That is sand mafia here which is very much prevalent in India. So removal of the sand from the wetlands will uh, destabilize the ecosystem and and then it, it finally degenerates the wetland itself. So this should be protected in order to protect um, our ecosystem. And aquaculture, aqu uh, that is artificial uh, culture of the uh, fishes. So for this purpose, the wetlands are being destroyed. Okay, and the habitat destruction and deforestation are the obvious examples. And the use of pollutions, sorry, pollution uh, from the agricultural runoff that is use of pesticides, fungicides in the agriculture and industrial effluents. These are also contributed to the depletion. And the domestic waste are being dumped in the wetland areas because these are all already the swampy, marshy areas. So these are all the um, areas no man's land they can dump anything uh, near the wetlands so this is one of the reason and agriculture runoff industrial effluents are also causing a threat uh, to the wetlands and climate change is another culprit here so these are all the reason for uh, the depletion of wetlands in india and how do we mitigate the wetland uh, destruction so we should survey and demarcate the areas important uh, wetlands so we should protect uh, in the later time. Here, the National Wetland Conservation Program uh, of Government of India uh, is doing this work of survey and demarcation and protection of natural regeneration. If we protect the natural regeneration, it will self-sustain itself and grow um, as a self-sustaining body, these wetlands. And by employing artificial regeneration, for example, uh, by planting mangrove se seedlings in a nearby oceanic oceanic beds uh, this creates wetlands here itself by providing uh, artificial regeneration of mangrove okay and afforestation weed control wildlife con conservation removal of encroachments that is agriculture encroachment or industrial effluents and eutrophication abatement abatement techniques like uh, uh, preventing runoff of agricultural nutrients into the water bodies okay and use of uh, judicious uh, methods for fertilizer application in the agricultural operation. These are all the important uh, techniques we can mitigate the uh, wetland destruction. So, and also creating environment awareness uh, is another thing. So, every year uh, on the 2nd of February, uh, World Wetland Day is celebrated. Okay, this is uh, celebrated to mark the uh, date of signing of Ramsar Convention, that is, Convention on Wetland. Okay, in 2nd February 1971, this Ram, Ramsar is, uh, is situated in Iran, okay, and Ramsar Convention is a convention to protect uh, wetlands throughout the world. So, thank you, thanks for watching. Uh, for previous videos, uh, click here, uh, it will redirect you to that. Thank you.